Today we will look at the inference for the slope of a least squares regression line. We will test whether there is a linear association between x and y. If there is no useful linear relationship between the two quantitative variables, it is the same as saying there is no correlation between the variables. The slope of the true regression equation for the population would be zero. However, you can really test that the slope is equal to some non-zero number. Here's a discussion about this test to help you understand why we do this test. In evaluating whether a linear model is effective in describing a relationship between two numerical variables, there are three different aspects of report and regression line that you can look at. Each of these three provides you with different information about the linear model, and all three ne are needed to conclude that a linear model is appropriate model for the relationship. First is correlation, r and r squared. These measure the degree to which the points in your sample fall close to the line. This is the major measure of the strength of the linear relationship, but doesn't answer the question about whether the linear model is best description of the relationship. You can have very high values for R in situations where the relationship isn't really linear. Residuals. By making a residual plot, you can determine whether a linear model is most appropriate. If there is a pattern in the residuals, then it is likely that you can improve upon any predictions you make by considering other models, including exponential, other transformations of data, polynomial models, etc. Inference for the regression. Even if you have a decent value for R and the residual plot shows no pattern, there is still the issue of whether, in sampling, you just happen to get points that fall close to a line. The linear regression t-test assesses the probability of getting a value for the slope as large or larger than you get, given that there is no relationship. So the name of our test that we're going to use is the t-test for slope. On your calculator, it's the linear regression t-test. Our hypothesis are, our null hypothesis is beta 1 equals 0. 0 means there's no linear relationship between x and y, but could be non-zero. Our alternative hypothesis is beta 1 is greater than 0, less than 0, or not equal to 0. Our conditions are simple and easy, and you may not even need to address. The sample is randomly selected. Observations are independent. Scatter plot is approximately linear. Relationship between the variables is linear. No apparent pattern in the residuals plot. They're scattered with consistent spread. And distribution on residuals is approximately normal, or the histogram of residuals is symmetric. Our test statistic is t equals b1 minus beta 1 all over s of b1. And your degrees of freedom is n minus 2. B1 is the slope of the sample. Beta 1 is the slope of the population. And S, B1, is the standard deviation of the sample. The name of the confidence interval is the slope of the population regression line for B1, or beta 1. This would be B1 plus or minus T star times the standard deviation of B1. When your hypothesis test indicates that an association exists, you can create a confidence interval for the slope of the true line. The slope from earlier, the model that predicts the weights of teenage boys, so this is from the example earlier, increases about 4.2 pounds for every additional inch in height on average. In our confidence interval, we are 95% confident that the mean height of teenage boys is between 68 inches and 70 inches. However, the confidence interval for the slope would be, we are 95% confident that the average weights of teenage boys increase between 3.8 and 46.6 pounds per additional inch of height. So let's look at our example. We're going to perform a linear regression hypothesis test and create a 95% confidence interval for the slope of the anxiety and math test data. 
So we're going to go through, and this is a printout of data that you could see, okay, that you could see in a problem to do. So they give you R squared and R. They give you S and R degrees of freedom here. But we're going to look at anxiety level because that's what we're talking about here. This right here would be B1. So that would be B1, your slope of your sample, okay? 1.551 would be S of B1, your standard deviation of your sample, okay? And we'll come back and we're going to look at these two numbers here in a moment. So let's go ahead and start this. First, we need to name our test. This is a t-test for slope or a linear regression t-test. Beta 1 is the slope of the true least square regression line. between math scores and anxiety levels. Our conditions, it's safe to assume Observations are independent because one student's score should not impact another student's score. Relationship between anxiety level and math score appear to be fairly linear. So when we're looking at the graph, Residuals plot is without pattern and has a consistent spread. And the histogram of residuals is fairly straight. Our null hypothesis is B1 or beta 1 equals 0. No linear relationship between anxiety level and math scores. Our 
our alternative hypothesis, V1 doesn't equal zero. A linear relationship between anxiety levels and math scores. Our evidence for our null hypo our, our alternative hypothesis is B1 equals negative 4.48, which doesn't equal zero. And where we got that is right here. This is our B1, okay? And when I'm talking about the residuals plot, the um, scatter plot, and the residuals histogram. I was looking at these pictures here. So since they didn't give us a significance level, um, we're gonna use alpha equals 0 0.05. My degrees of freedom would be 24 minus two, because it's N minus two, which equals 22. To find T, T equals B1 minus beta 1 all over the standard deviation of B1, which remember we pointed those out on our data here. Here's B1. Here's the standard deviation of B1. That would be negative 4.48624. Minus zero because our null hypothesis equals zero divided by 1.551, which equals negative 2.89. So if you look back at our data here, this negative 2.89 is your T ratio, which is your T value. Then looking further here, this is your probability under the curve. That's your P value here. So this would be your test statistic and this would be your P value. So we have a p-value equals 0 0.0084. So my p-value is less than alpha because 0 0.0084 is less than 0 0.05. So I reject the null hypothesis. And I would say there is evidence that on average, lower anxiety scores are associated with higher math scores. There is evidence to suggest that there is a linear relationship in the population between math test score and anxiety. Now we're going to do a 95% confidence interval. So 
So that would be V1 plus or minus T star times our standard deviation of V1. So B1 would be 4.48624 plus or minus T star. You can either use your calculator or go to your table. And remember the degrees of freedom is 22. And you would get 2.074 times the standard deviation, which is 1.551. You can also put the data in your calculator and find it that way. We would get negative 7.703 to negative 1.269. Now we just need to interpret this. So we'd say I am 95% confident that the interval negative 7.703 to negative 1.269 contains the average math score difference associated with a difference in anxiety level. Each additional unit of anxiety level is associated with an average decrease between 1.27 and 7.7 .7 points in the math score.